Hi, it's time for another math easy solution uh, to discuss further into the laboratory project on Taylor polynomials and now look at question three and if you haven't already make sure to watch my earlier videos on questions one and two where I basically looked at a recap of linear approximation which is approximating uh, basically a point on a curve by using a straight line like that and it gives you a range of a quote reasonable approximation like that but then in question one I looked at yeah, using a quadratic or a parabola or a second degree or second order polynomial approximation instead of just a straight line and the conditions we have are I, double I and triple I were basically the point uh, or the value of the approximation uh, near A or at A we set it equal to the function at A as well as the first derivative and second derivative and then uh, I showed it over here as you can see the straight line approximation is not as good as the uh, curved one which is in blue of this function uh, cos of x and then in question two I looked at a, a accuracy and determining a range for a given uh, accuracy like that for example point one or that so make sure to watch my earlier videos on that so now let's look at question three which states to approximate a function f by a quadratic function p near a number a it is best to write p in the form p of x equals a plus b x minus a plus c x minus a squared as opposed to the, the basic uh, quadratic one that I wrote in question one which we derived which p of x equals a plus b x plus c x squared but nonetheless this is still a second order uh, polynomial so the quadratic is the highest power is going to be x squared and then just the constants are going to be uh, different so we could write in this form and then uh, I'll show you why it's good to write in this form well yeah it's pretty good for solving for the constants as I'll show and the question three states show that the quadratic function that satisfies those three conditions where the derivative uh, the function and the second derivative are all equal um, at a and show that when you satisfy them you get this function p of x equals uh, f of a plus f prime of a x times x minus a plus one half f uh, double prime of a times x minus a squared so in other words what we want to do is I'll write solution so what we want to do is solve for the constants a b and c and that, that satisfy those three conditions and to do that first what I'm going to do is just write the functions and then solve for the derivatives so we have p of x equals to a plus b x minus a and then plus c x minus a squared like that so that is what we have and then the first derivative p of x equals to well when take the derivative derivative of a is zero derivative of uh, b there's going to be b and then x minus a is just 1. And then plus over here, the 2 goes down, c, and then we have, well, x minus a like that. So that is uh, the derivative over there. And then the second derivative, p double prime of x equals 2. This vanishes to b. This one we have now 2c, x minus a is just 1. So that's just a constant like that. And now the three conditions we want to solve are three conditions. In other words, three conditions for uh, for having p of x approximating f of x near, just put it more complete, near x equals to a or, so the three conditions we imposed from question one where i is going to be uh, p of a equals to f of a like that and then the second one here p uh, prime of a equals to f of a, I mean uh, f prime of a so the derivatives are equal and the third one is like this p double prime of a equals to f double prime of a in other words in other words what we can do is just plug in the a values inside over there and then equate that to f of a and then solve for the constant so what we'll do is and the reason why we uh, or this form is pretty good for uh, using the quadratic approximation is because when you plug that in it just uh, vanishes and we plug in p of a over there we get well a plus and then these all go to zero so that's it this, this just vanishes we need to put in a inside so x mi a minus a is zero so we get a equals to a in other words this is our f of a because p of a is set to equal to f of a so uh, a equals f of a like that that's the constant now the second one here this, the derivative uh, here when we plug in a well we just get b and this vanishes 
So we get equals to b. And this equals to f prime of a. So we have the first two constants over there. I'll do a better box like that. And then this last one here, f double prime of a, this equals to, well, when you plug it in, that's just a constant. So that just equals to 2c. So I'll just put 2c. In other words, this equals to f double prime of a. So what we'll do now is, is c, just divide this out over here. c is equal to f uh, prime of a, and then divide by 2. Or in other words, just put it like this, uh, 1 half times f double prime. So that's what our c is. So there it is. We've solved for the 3, and that is exactly how what we were supposed to find. So in other words, thus what we have is p of x is equal to, well, a. Um, yeah, remember a, yeah, so if we go up here, a plus b, x minus a, plus c, x minus a squared. So a is just f of a. And then plus the b one. So b, let's erase this. b is f double prime of a times it by x minus a, like that. And then the c is going to be 1 half f double prime of a times it by x minus a squared, like that. So yeah, let's move it over like that. So that is our function. We just circle it. And as you can see, this is exactly the one we were trying to uh, show that it's the same. So f of a plus f prime of a x minus a plus 1 half f double prime of a times by x minus a squared, exactly like this. So yeah, that is all for today. I'll go over a question for in a later video. So anyways, that is all for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you followed along. And make sure to watch my early videos on questions one and two. And yeah, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. And like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, as well as viewing these notes on Steemit. I'll be uploading those in article format, so make sure to check those out, as well as viewing my math and science forums, and uh, yeah, post any cool math or science-related stuff you find. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.